it's on. Uh, do you want me to look at you or at the camera? The camera. Okay. Probably a better option. Um, <laughs> my name is Jacinda Ardern. I'm uh, 30 years old. Um, I attended Morinsville College and from about 96 and 97 I was a student um, of chemistry and biology and participated in a lot of science competitions. Um, but now I am a member of Parliament for the Labour Party. Okay, now can you tell us a bit about your um, your project that was was for you went into um, you got yourself to realise a dream? Can you tell us a little bit about your project? Just a wee bit, not too much. A few details and how you work with Bowling greens. Like yeah. <laughs> um, I think it was uh, the beginning in, in 1996 from memory. Um, a friend of mine um, named Virginia. Um, got together and decided that we were going to pull together a, a science project for a couple of different competitions and I guess that was the motivation um, for us to really put our heart and soul into a project around um, combating at what at that time was um, a blight in the New Zealand bowling community, um, a, a, a fungi that was overtaking um, the most pristine bowling greens. Uh, so we decided that uh, all of the commercial responses weren't working uh, and that us, uh, the two little um, students from Warrensville College, maybe, maybe we could come up with a solution. Uh, and uh, in the back room of our little science class, um, we did. Hundreds and hundreds of agar plates um, went through uh, a production process until we fi found this one little mystery bacterium that did the trick. Um, but it really was the motivating factor, I think, the thing that kept us going um, through all of that project, I think, was the fact that it wasn't just um, something we were doing um, as a class project, but there were other things we could tap into, whether it be um, uh, the science fair competition, Realise the Dream, the Crest um, program. Those were, those were those little extra added motivation that I think finally got us over the line and eventually took us to um, South Korea, um, as a result of, of placing um, in a competition. Now, was that a Royal Society trip that you went on, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. yes, it was, uh, yeah, I about believe... about 500 students on there, wasn't there? Um, yes, it was, um, well, it was the APEC Youth Science Festival. Um, to this day, when I tell people I attended <laughs> 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 um, an APEC Youth Science Festival... Um, uh, I get a, I get a little funny look um, because it doesn't really relate to what I did now, but I learnt a lot of s skills through through science. Um, uh, how to how to have an inquiring mind, how to probably persevere um, because uh, there were a couple of times where our project just went um, badly, badly wrong, but we just kept going. And I to this day, I always thought the reason at the time that we got as far as we did was because we found the answer. Um, but when I got to judging, um, it was a, a very fine judge that said to me afterwards, the reason they had awarded us a prize was because of our perseverance and the fact that we never gave up, um, not necessarily because we got over the line. And, and during the process, like the crest process involves um, working with other people and stuff like that, mm. um, can you run through some of that sort of what you learned from working with those people and helping your project go and yeah. things like that? The interesting thing was, I think, had we been limited to our own skills and our own knowledge base, we probably wouldn't have got particularly far. It was working alongside um, our, uh, consultants, our consultants, <laughs> primarily, I would say, um, our chemistry teacher at the time, um, Mr Lowe, um, but also we managed to tap into other expertise that uh, were within our region, in particular the Ruakura um, I think it was called the Ruakura Research Centre. We went, we went and spent a day with them in their laboratory. Got a real sense of um, a working, a working lab, um, and tapped into some experts in the field who, um, who were really intrigued by our project as well. I think and surprised that we had um, um, ventured down some of the paths we had. But it was really good to tap into their expertise, and that was again through. Um, through the program that we were a part of, rather than it just being just being a school project. So you worked a bit with um, Margaret Demina, who is, is world famous for her work with facial facial eczema. We she did. retired at the time, wasn't she? Yes, I actually can't remember that. <laughs> 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 this was what was this fourteen years ago? <laughs> um, although I do um, I do. Um, relive the glory days of the <laughs> APEC Youth Science Festival. Some elements of the project I can't recall, but I do remember <laughs> working with some fabulous people. 
And you ended up on television at one stage, didn't you? We did. After the East Waikato Science Fair, for some reason, it must have been a light news day, Television One decided that um, all those bowlers around New Zealand might be interested in our project and came out and, and filmed us at the school. Um, and that was a really, a really big deal for us. Um, uh, and I remember um, Virginia's legs made a television debut, so <laughs> in particular. <laughs> but it was very exciting. I think it's, Mum still has it on video somewhere. Yeah, so basically the work that, that you learnt, that there is, is I mean, when that fact you haven't gone on in science is, mm. is not really that, that relevant. It's, yeah. your, it's, your, um, it, it's the application of the yeah. processes you learnt and how to network with people and stuff like that. Absolutely. And I've certainly found in the line of work that I do now, um, it's really important, I think, that people see that you have a range of experiences, that you've had um, a varied background. Um, and science, I think, although it's not a field I work in now, having had the opportunity um, to see the different areas uh, where New Zealand really does incredibly well for a very small country, um, having tapped into a little bit of that expertise, having learnt um, uh, how to find an answer and even what you learn along the way, um, all of that, I think, has come in handy. And more specifically, every time I visit a bowling green now, I've got a little story. <laughs> So to upcoming young young students, you'd just say get into it, would you? Absolutely. I'd say, you know, I never went into um, uh, chemistry or biology thinking one day that I was going to be a scientist permanently uh, wearing a, a lab coat, but I could see the value of what I was learning and I would say to anyone, you know, um, you don't need to know what you're going to do 10 years down the track, um, but no matter what you do end up doing, I think science will always be relevant. Because you're currently the youngest MP, aren't you? I, I was. Um, I was for about a year and a half. Someone from someone else came in and, and took my. Took, I'm the youngest Labour MP in Parliament currently. Yep. yep. Okay, and you're certainly going for. And we've got seat. several scientists in our in our party, and they're um, we often call on them for their expertise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not one of them. <laughs> okay, well, thanks very much. No problem.